this pattern has a bunch of different design options. So what you'll do is page through, find the one you want, and just follow this, print which pages it says to print. That way you're not printing all 40 something pages of the whole thing. The other thing to note is this gray line. If you wanna assemble this and then trim that excess off so you get that cleaner edge, cut from the gray line. Otherwise you can just cut from that black line and assemble it and it'll be just fine and you can still sand it a little bit. This is one that was just assembled that way from the black line so you don't have to try to trim it and sanded it a little bit. But you'll cut all these parts out, follow the instructions, all the A parts will be cut from a thin material and there's a couple B's these are the thick gusset. That's what gives it the space to hold the cards. Both of those need to be cut from something thicker. You can build those up from something thin, but it's always better just to go something thick like this. I think this is like a 12 or a 13 ounce. So I colored my leather and then I sealed it and put something over it after it kind of dried a little bit and was still had a little bit of pliability so that it was nice and flat and this won't stretch at all while I'm cutting the parts out. You don't have to do that but so these will have a little letter on them that's an A so I just separate the B parts that'll have to be done out of that thick stuff So any of the holes that are solid black, I suggest using a stitching chisel. It'll make the finished product look just a little bit nicer. And for the ones with the white centers, just a hole punch is fine. You can use either or for the whole project, but by doing the hole punch for these and then the stitching chisel for this, you'll get a cleaner look while still having that ease while you're sewing it together. This will give you just a little bit more play. When you're punching out the holes on the thicker stuff, make sure you're not tipping this tool one side or the other or it's gonna misalign the parts. I'd rather look at it from this way than this way because if I'm tipping back and forth this way, I can't see it from my angle. From the camera's angle, I would turn it this way and do this line so that it makes it easier to see this tip. And that's more important than this way. So I'll turn it so it's facing me. That way I can see that angle. Make sure I'm going straight up and down. It'll just help the parts align a little bit nicer. I just place this and then check the angle first before I punch through. And then turn it so I can still see that same angle. You'll be able to see on these gusseted parts, the very end has just a little bit of a curve taken out of it. So I'll spin it around so I can see that. And the reason that's there is when you sew the final parts together, when you come across this edge here, it'll have something for that thread to sit in just a little bit. I always cut away from these inside corners so you get a nice clean cut. Since this thick piece is some tougher skirting, I cut it a little bit, I didn't try to keep going through, and then peeled that stuff out of the way so I can see these cut lines clear. So you can see some spots I'm all the way through, but that way I don't have that paper and stuff moving around, getting in my way.
So all the larger parts will be put together and then these three smaller ones. You can put some thread through here and just tie it or leave these needles in there as you go. That will sit right in that groove. Because the center parts have that larger hole, there will be a little bit of play if you need to move some things around. 